Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. At the end of last week, we took a look at some teams that were surprising in 2021, some teams that were disappointing in 2021. And we said that today, Monday, we were going to start taking a look at 2022. It's never too early to start looking ahead. And we were going to start looking at some teams that maybe you should watch out for going into this upcoming college football season. And you guys, you could make the case that every team is worth watching, right? Because we genuinely don't know what's going to happen in college football this upcoming year. We certainly didn't know what was going to happen in 2021, a year that I still think was one of the best, if not the best, college football season ever. But there are a handful of teams up here that we want to touch on briefly that we think maybe you should keep your eyes on. Teams that can make some noise in their conference, maybe make some noise on the national stage. Uh, Some teams that are going to make this college football season coming up very, very fun and very, very interesting. So again, guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert here to break down these handful of teams very quickly before we start talking the Super Bowl, and then it's college football for the rest of the year. So get ready for that. But as always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Guys, that helps our channel big time. Every time you hit that like button, every comment that you leave, every time you share our video, you text it, you email it, you show it to someone in person, it doesn't matter. It helps our channel tremendously and helps us continue to bring you some of the best news, analysis, predictions in the country. Uh, So again, we can't thank you enough for your support, but if you continue to do that, we can continue to grow. So make sure you do all that. And of course, check out everything down in the description as well. So this, again, guys, is going to be a relatively short video. Let's just do some quick hitters here on the four teams we have up here, and then a kind of a cluster, as you can see, and we'll touch on that at the very end. Uh, but let's start with NC State. Let's start with Dave Derwin and the Wolfpack, a team that finished 9-3 and three last year, finished the season ranked 20th in the country, so a top 20 finish. Their losses, not bad. Lost by 3 to Wake Forest, lost by 1 to Miami, lost by 14 in Week 2 to Mississippi State. But why is this a team to watch out for? Well, this is a team, guys, that could very well win the entire ACC. Not just the Atlantic Division, the entire ACC. Devin Leary returns at quarterback. That is a huge boost. Anytime you bring back a veteran quarterback, your team is obviously going to be looking pretty good. But it's the defense for the Wolfpack that is going to be the key. They are loaded defensively. They're getting key starters back. They're getting guys that were hurt that are coming back. This is the defense that ranked third in the ACC last year in total defense. And they're getting basically everybody back from that defense. So to me, guys, this will be Dave Doran's best squad. You know, we said this was Dave Doran's best team last year in 2021. I think that's going to be the case in 2022. They get to host Wake Forest. They do have to travel to Clemson. Let's keep in mind that NC State did beat Clemson uh, in overtime earlier in 2021. So winning the ACC, winning the Atlantic, not out of the realm of possibility. NC State nearly won it this year had they not lost to Wake Forest. This is a very, very dangerous team, guys, and one that can make some noise in the ACC. And if things go their way, could be some dark horse playoff contender if you were daring and want to go that far. Houston. We had Houston as one of our surprise teams in 2021. Last year, they went 12-2, and two, so why is this a team that you need to look out for? I'm looking out for Houston for the sole reason of they could be the highest-ranked Group of Five conference champion. Uh, obviously, that title has gone to Cincinnati each of the last two years, Cincinnati and Houston residing in the same conference, the American Conference. But, but you look at Houston, guys. This is a team that could make a big run this year. Clayton Toon back at quarterback. Alton McCaskill back at running back. Nathaniel Dell back at wide receiver. You know, Dana Holgerson prides himself on being a offensive-minded coach, and it took such a long time to get this Houston offense going. The defense has been phenomenal. Expected to be the same again. But with all the key returners coming back on offense, this is a Houston team that can make some serious, serious noise this year and could very well be a New Year's Six Bowl team. Not to mention that their non-conference is relatively favorable at Texas San Antonio, UTSA, at Texas Tech, Kansas, and Rice, all of those winnable for Houston to the point where there is a chance they could go undefeated if they can get past a, we don't know, manageable conference schedule. You look at Arkansas, another team we had as a surprise team from last year. Uh, This is a team that is loaded with talent and finally getting some respect back on their name after being the laughingstock of the SEC and really uh, a laughingstock of the nation for such a long time. Uh, K.J. Jefferson returns at quarterback. Sam Pittman somehow found a way to retain both of his coordinators. Kendall Bryles was rumored to be going to Miami. I think Arkansas was able to get him to stay. Barry Odom has been one of the better defensive minds in the game for a while and has turned down multiple uh, defensive coordinator jobs. And even a few head coaching jobs, some have speculated to stay at Arkansas as their defensive coordinator. 
Jefferson is back. They have a loaded backfield. They have a very dominant offensive line. They added Jaden Hazelwood, the five-star wide receiver transfer from Oklahoma. Bumper Poole returns to lead the linebacking core. Jalen Catalan returns uh, back in the secondary from injury. Latavius Brinney transfers in from Georgia. Dwight McGlother uh, transfers in from LSU. Sam Pittman has dominated the transfer portal this offseason for Arkansas to the point where all the people that they lost from this offseason, all the people they lost from a very solid 2021 season where they finished ranked 21st and at 9-4, and four, they've replaced those pieces. They've replaced them. Some would say they've replaced them even better than where they were. This is an Arkansas team, guys, that can make a lot of noise because when you look at their schedule, it is relatively favorable. The SEC is tough enough as it is, but the Razorbacks do not face a true road game until week six when they travel to Mississippi State. They get to host Cincinnati in the opener. They get to host Alabama. They get to host LSU. They get to host Ole Miss, and they get to host South Carolina, the next team we're going to talk about. But the Hogs, all their big-time games, the ones that many would consider the toughest, are going to be in Fayetteville. Also going to have A&M, of course, in Arlington. But still, all the big ones are true home games. Arkansas takes care of business, and it's a handful of those. This could be a team that can win nine regular season games, or even ten regular season games, contend for not just an SEC title, or not just a New Year's Six Bowl game, but maybe an SEC title as well. We mentioned South Carolina will be traveling to Arkansas, and that Week 2 matchup, guys, is going to be very, very exciting because these two teams... But South Carolina, in particular, exceeded expectations in 2021 and are looking to build on that in 2022. And Shane Beamer did a lot of that and has drawn a lot of excitement from his utilization of the transfer portal, something that Sam Pittman also did very well. South Carolina last year, guys, went 7-6. and six. They beat North Carolina 38-21 to in the Mayo Bowl. No one saw that coming from South Carolina. I don't think many people had the Gamecocks making a bowl game, let alone winning one. But now they've dominated the transfer portal. Spencer Rattler is now in as their quarterback. South Carolina struggled mightily, really, with so many different quarterback problems, so many different quarterbacks that they play. Let's keep that in mind. Seven and six with tons of offensive and quarterback questions. Now they've got a good one in Spencer Rattler. Then they got the tight end from Oklahoma and Austin Stogner. Then they got the Wake Forest running back transfer and Christian Beal Smith. The offense looks very, very good, and the defense, guys, wasn't exactly horrible to begin with. This could be a very scary offense for Shane Bieber in Columbia. Schedule, a little tough at Arkansas, at Kentucky, at Florida, at Clemson, but they host Georgia, they host Texas A&M, they host Tennessee. This is a South Carolina team that right now no one expects to win the SEC East because that's Georgia's division to lose, as it should be, but a South Carolina team that could win seven regular season games, could win eight or nine regular season games with the talent they have coming in and obviously the momentum they have coming in to 2022. So the future very bright in Columbia, future very bright for Shane Beamer, just entering year two. And I think you're going to get a real look between Arkansas and South Carolina, which of those two teams could be the real deal. Uh, the winner of that Week 2 matchup, I think it's going to be the real deal. The loser might have a little bit more work to do. And then finally, guys, we have a collection of teams here. Teams with major coaching changes. And some may say that's cliche. Some may say that's lazy on our part. But guys, we have just experienced one of the wildest coaching carousels uh, in recent memory. The amount of big-name programs that went out and hired big-name coaches uh, was shocking to so many different people. Uh, and we're going to have a series coming out very soon. Next week, is we're going to start our coaching carousel series, kind of breaking down all the new hires, grading them, uh, highlighting them, discussing them. Uh, and we'll go into deeper detail on those. But, I mean, just a handful of teams you need to watch out for. USC, Lincoln Riley, which has kind of become the villain of college football. How will he do in the Pac-12 after leaving Oklahoma? Also now with the addition of Caleb Williams, the former Oklahoma quarterback. LSU, Brian Kelly going from Notre Dame to the SEC. Doing some weird dances down there. Develop some weird southern Cajun accent. But will he succeed in Baton Rouge? Opening the season against Florida State. Hosting Tennessee, Ole Miss, and Alabama all in Death Valley. Notre Dame. Marcus Freeman replaced Brian Kelly. Yes, he lost to Oklahoma State in that bowl game back in January. Blew out a 28-7 lead. Not the best start to his era, but now he's going to get a full season to work with the Fighting Irish. And we're going to really get to see what the Fighting Irish are made of in week one when they open at Ohio State. And then in November, they host Clemson and end with a road game at USC. And that rivalry between Notre Dame and USC has a chance to get even stronger and even more competitive. Miami. 
They're going to begin the Mario Cristobal era, era, bringing him in from Oregon. Oklahoma, Brent Venables, now coming over as, where he was the def- Clemson defensive coordinator, becoming the head coach in Norman, but now an Oklahoma team that has major quarterback questions with the loss of Spencer Rattler to South Carolina and Caleb Williams to USC. And then you can even mention Clemson in this group as well, guys. No head coaching changes, but a team that lost their offensive coordinator and Tony Elliott to Virginia and the defensive coordinator, Brent Venables, like we just mentioned, to Oklahoma. So two great great coordinators that have made Clemson what they were are now gone. Dabo Swinney has had to replace them. Clemson was a team that we viewed as a disappointment in 2021. How do they bounce back in 2022? Obviously an improving ACC, a tough road game at Notre Dame, the loss of two coordinators, and quarterback playing DJ Uyunglele that has been inconsistent. That's going to be a team to watch out for. And of course there are many others, and we're going to break down all those big coaching changes, especially head coaching changes, uh, in the following weeks, guys, with a very brand new series on that that we're very excited about. But there you go, guys. 2022 teams to watch. There are so many other teams we could put up here. These are not the only teams you have to watch. But these are teams that we thought would be noteworthy. Maybe not teams that are going to go win a national championship or make the playoff, but teams that can make some noise and, as we always say, can maybe affect who makes that conference championship, affect who makes that college football playoff. So a lot of big names coming out in 2022, a lot of big teams coming forward in 2022, and of course can be filled with tons of surprises, tons of disappointments, and this time next year we'll be breaking all those down once again. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos, and of course, Check out everything down in the description below, guys. Every time you hit that like button, every comment, every view, every share, it helps us out tremendously. It helps our channel and business grow. So please continue to do that. Help us continue to bring you some of the best football content in the country, some of the best football content on YouTube. It means the world to us. We want to keep doing it, but we can't do it without you. So make sure to help us out. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert.